And that's the basic gist of John Rawls' argument. That makes sense. Chris? What are some common objections to Rawls? OK. Yeah. The most common place that people object to Rawls is the step between would people choose these two principles of justice in the original position. Um, I personally don't even know if they would, because the maxi man argument is a very strict um, sort of uh, you know, threshold for what people would choose. Sometimes it might make sense. People might be willing to sacrifice a little bit to make everybody better off. Maybe not sacrifice everything, but slightly, slightly maybe not even noticeably worse off, other people are better off. That's certainly a possibility. And so a lot of contention is that people wouldn't choose the two principles of justice. They would choose maybe a more prioritarian system in which um, the ideas of justice are first and foremost, and the ideas of equality are first and foremost, but people might be willing to sacrifice something so that other people are better off. The main, the, the thing that Rawls is sort of responding to that was popular before he came along is utilitarianism, is the basic sort of most of the popular other philosophy. Now, not a lot of people believe in utilitarianism um, because it's got a lot of problems. Mainly that some people are, should be made to sac could be made to sacrifice for other people, and that would be morally acceptable, which is, if we believe in individual rights, then that's sort of a questionable claim. So Rawls sort of responds to that uh, utilitarianism and some sort of prioritarianism, or sufficientarianism, where there's a, a threshold of like, once people have reached a certain point, then it doesn't matter what kind of inequality you have. That's another popular argument. Um, so long as everybody is at a basic point. Does that answer your question? Yes. Great. So he derives the two principles of justice from his original position, mm -hmm. but is there any like real like application of the original position? Like, is that a goal that like that's the way that people would be? Well, the original the goal of the original position. <laughs> is to try to create a situation in which circumstances are fair. So from that fair circumstances, we can figure out what a fair outcome would be. It's, it's a hypothetical construct. It wouldn't, the original position would never root, would never uh, exist in real life. But that's, like, that's not the goal of it. It's, it's not, the goal is not to replicate that. The goal is to figure out what people would choose in the original position, which is a fair Construct. The first argument would be it is a fair construct, and that's a fairly easy argument to make. In that, you know, if people don't know where they're going to end up, they're going to choose a fair outcome. So, given that that's a fair a fair construct, then whatever people would choose in that fair construct should be what is fair in the real world. And um, he says that they'll choose the two principles of justice. Um, other people will disagree, but uh, assuming the original position argument holds then it's whatever people would choose in this hypothetical original <coughs> position would be fair for society. So what effect does that have, like, <coughs> taking this sort of abstract idea, mm -hmm. how, how does that apply to actual, like, what would be examples of policies that adhere to this and violate it? Well, I mean, this is, we haven't gotten the policy yet. This is very much more abstract. This is very basically, he's trying to figure out how we should set up a society. What, rules and institutions should we create. So he believes we should create institutions that abide by the two principles of justice. So a government that would guarantee basic freedoms and a distribution of wealth that meets the difference principle. That's what he would say is, is just in society. And anything that doesn't meet that would therefore be some level of injustice. Yeah. Have people done like sociology studies where they put people in a room and say, okay, we're going to let you out. <laughs> yeah, the problem <laughs> is that... That would imply that the social sciences are scientific. Oh, we, and I'm not sure... <laughs> Chris? <laughs> Leave now. Uh, the problem is that the only reason the original position works is because nobody knows where they're going to end up in society. Nobody knows what they're naturally endowed with. So any sort of... As soon as it hits the real world, it becomes obsolete because people already are biased in some way or another. So the original position seeks to take out of the equation people's natural advantages, that are their, their biases based on their, because they'll, they'll want to create a si system that advantages themselves, right? If you know you're going to end up you know, better off, you'll want a system that doesn't necessarily, that is better, people are better off. 
Um, but if you don't know that, then you won't. And it's impossible to have people who well, don't know anything well, unless you I raise them in test tubes. Could, or you could test them in <laughs> Second Life or something. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, possible. That's interesting. I feel like that's, um, that's the cutting edge research in the humanities. Is <laughs> second <laughs> life. John Rawls, second life. I was just going to ask a further question about that. Like, yeah. That's presuming the people in the study would be like, be yourself. But couldn't you, like, I don't know how, but how useful this would be, but asks. Imagine people you're to be aware. Like, Imagine you don't know and there's a bad ignorance. Have, yeah. have people done that? Like, what people would uh, they really come up with? I mean, I don't know. Again, I think that those studies will always have. To take with a grain of salt that they exist. I don't know that they exist because it's so impossible to, to dis uh, distance yourself from right. those things. But another important claim on this is that you know maybe people aren't self interested in the way that Rawls thinks they're self interested. Rawls says people want certain primary goods, primary goods being things you want more of, so no matter what. Um, he thinks of them as wealth and opportunity and a couple other like very basic things. He thinks people are self-interested and will seek out those things. Another criticism of two roles could be that people aren't necessarily self-interested. People are the altruistic, but people who have different goals than what, what Rawls considers to be primary goods. Yeah. 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 Anything else? How many pieces of cake do I need to bring back? <laughs>